is for the girls. So let's talk about one of our faves. This is Oregon taking on California Baptist, and that is Deja Kelly with the assist there. Here she is again getting a bucket. She had 10, 8, and 7 in this matchup, and then she did this later in the day. Let's kick it to our sideline reporter, Oregon women's basketball star Deja Kelly. Hi, Deja. Hi, guys. Thanks. Yes, UC Riverside came out to a really hot start. Led by Barrington Hargris and Caleb Smith, they really got to touch paint. And naturally, our Women Crush Wednesday is Deja Kelly. Deja, I want to talk about that, what you did last week. It's been making headlines, obviously. But first, I feel like we should get to know you just a little bit because I feel like there's a lot. So you're at Oregon now. You were at UNC for four years before deciding to go to Eugene. Why did you decide to spend your last year at Oregon? I think for me, it was me just thinking long term and, and thinking about the goals that I have set for myself. And ultimately, that is playing at the next level um, and just continuing to raise my draft stock as well. So I think just being able to find that perfect fit in my last year and see what program and what system could best benefit me and where I could thrive and grow, continue to grow in the most. That was the biggest thing. And Coach Graves, uh, he does a really good job with his guards uh, historically with building them and, and really making them into pros. And they have longevity uh, in, in the pros. So I think just being able to see that and try to follow in their footsteps as well, that was the biggest thing. And that's why I chose to come here. I like that you said that he has a lot of girls that go from Oregon to the pros. Obviously, Courtney Vandersloot, Sabrina Unescu, I know she was a huge part of your decision to go to Oregon. What did she tell you when you were making that decision? She gave me a list of the kind of advice that that I really went by throughout making my decision. But the main thing was her just telling me, remember who I'm making this decision for. I think ultimately it was me just having to really focus on doing what's best for me and really not anything else, especially with it being my last year with, you know, a lot at stake, a lot on the line, um, it, but a lot of, you know, beneficiaries that could come from this as well. So I think just being able to hear that from her and hear that advice for her to just be like, make sure, keep the main thing, the main thing. I have to, you know, also do the work on my side, continue to be in the gym on my side and do the things that I can control, but just making sure that this decision is for me and in my best interest. That makes sense. Uh, it's been fun learning about you and your mom who also played basketball. She is a coach. Um, it seemed like she's played a huge role in not only the person that you currently are on the basketball court, but just who you have presented as a person, uh, your work ethic. What is the biggest thing that you learned? And I know this is a loaded question um, that you learned from your mom that you carry with you. I think just it really is just her work ethic. I think just seeing, you know, single mother grew up in a single parent household. It was just me and my brother um, and just seeing how hard she worked to get us to the places that she wanted to go. She knew that her kids were going to have their college education paid for. So <laughs> just seeing how hard that she fought to, you know, get us at the best camps, get me at the best camps, get me in the best training sessions, just all the things that she really sacrificed. I think that's something that's really inspiring for me because now I'm making sacrifices in order to put myself in a really good position um, long term just in terms of my career and my passions and what I'm doing. And ultimately I'm trying to do it so I can in turn, you know, just give her a now peaceful life to where she doesn't have to worry about me or my brother and worry about what we're doing 24 seven. So I think for me, yeah, it was definitely her work ethic and how, and how um, hard she worked just to, you know, get us to where we needed to go. One thing, I think you've been doing such a good job just letting us know who you are as a person and your interests and taking advantage, again, um, uh, with the changing landscape of college basketball and college sports as a whole. But let's talk about the fact that one of your goals is to take my job and <laughs> be right here. You're trying to go into broadcast journalism. We talked about at the beginning of this how you almost had a triple-double against California Baptist, and then you went and did sideline later that day. Again, something that I could not imagine. Just walk us through what your day looked like that day was busy the build-up I was super anxious very nervous but um I was prepping for the game the men's game um trying to get my notes my keys for the game and, and figuring that out before my game and then there was like a cutoff about an hour and a half before tip off for my game which was at 4 p.m. And I was like, okay, now it's time to lock in on my game and make sure we win this game and do what I need to do to help us get this win. And then 
I can um, go back to focusing on doing sideline. And again, it was a lot of fun. This is my first time doing um, a live sideline broadcast. So I think for me, it was, was kind of just learning on the spot as well and just seeing kind of the behind the scenes and the prep, all of that goes that goes into it. So, but it was a lot of fun. It was, it was super nerve wracking, but once I was in it, I was in it and it, it just kind of flowed really well. I love it. You other girls could never. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> Deja, thank you so much. <laughs> Women Crush Wednesday. Thank you for joining us here on SportsCenter.